Welcome back everybody to another devlog on my adventure exploration game inspired by the N64 PS1 era of games currently named Space 64 but that is a working title and this is the ninth devlog we're getting close to being in double digits if you haven't already checked out the previous devlogs go and do that last week's devlog was all about implementing your feedback and your ideas we expanded the crash site to teach people some more mechanics we revisited swimming, boosting, we added the tricks when you're in mid-air. We also talked about gliders and how we could tweak gliders and maybe there's another idea there with membrane, but kind of between the, the arms. And then we, we made and imported another creature, the burrower. That was a, a fun one to do. But this week, we've got some more things to look at. As I'm sure many of you are very aware, I've been talking about dungeon shards for many devlogs now. These little things you'll collect around the planet and then you need 15 of them to go open the main dungeon to continue your journey. I've kind of had a little bit of a brain wave about it. I've kind of thought about it and kind of changed my mind a little bit. And I talked about this very briefly at the end of last week's devlog. But I actually think the idea of going collecting these things kind of weakens the, the kind of the story a little bit. So I have this idea now, instead of them being shards that you go and collect, they are these beacons that you go and walk up to and you press and then they come alive and they shoot a beam into the sky and then down to the dungeon. And I think that, to me, sounds way more exciting than just going around and collecting little shards. Because every time you activate one of these beacons, it's going to show a cutscene, which I guess after the first one you'll be able to skip. Need to figure that out in the future. Um, but you'll be able to look at these things and it'll show you this cutscene and it'll show you the dungeon and you'll always be reminded of this is where we need to go and i can put a prompt up on the screen that says activated three of these you still need to activate 12 more or i can have some sort of design around the the beacons as you go on and at, depending on how many you've collected it shows that number or there's a certain number of dots or something like that to show your progression and of course there's going to be 30 on the planet this is a fairly large place that we have and the first 15 will open the dungeon and the second 15 will give you a, you know, a unique cosmetic on the planet. But I just wanted to mock this up a little bit and show you all kind of what's in my head. None of this is in-game, this is just Blender and then some, you know, in-game screenshots and stuff that I've animated over. So hopefully you're all quite intrigued by this idea and maybe you like it more than the idea of going around and collecting shards. Let me know. I would love to hear what you all think about this. Uh, this is a weird way to start Devlog 9, I know but I wanted to get this out of the way just to the beginning to hear what you all think in the comments. And then maybe if you all like it, we'll start implementing this in the future weeks and actually getting this working. I think the idea of collectibles is great, but the idea of actual lore-based activation platforms sounds far more interesting to me. Anyway, I will leave that there and actually move on to the rest of the devlog now. So the first thing I want to look at in this devlog like properly is figuring out flying AI and if we can make them work before we, you know, actually dive into making a, a flying creature. So I've just made this little simple thing here. We've got a cube. So instead of the red cylinders from the previous combat episodes and stuff where we had, uh, before we implemented the hopper, we've now got a red cube. And this is going to move between these points you see here at different elevations. It's going to fly around them. And I can also get it to come try to attack me as well. So let's give this a go. If I come over here, we can watch it. I can spawn right here. And then you can see it is moving along this path. Oh, it's seen me. But it's not going to do anything. Oh, oh, it's because I'm outside the nav mesh. Okay, that's why. But yeah, it definitely wants to come and get me. But if I go away from it, it should go back to its patrol route. Yeah. I've only got it like a pretty small nav area right now, but you can see it moves around and it just kind of rotates at the points and goes back. So now if I get it to detect me again and I go hide behind here, what's it going to do? Where is it going to go? Oh, it's coming for me. It's coming for me. I just wish I could get it to uh, not hug the ground. I wish it would stay higher up. I don't know if there's a way I can set like its default height so it would always want to be like a certain level above the ground. But hey, that's working. And if I again go away, it'll go back to doing its little flight thing. And if it's up in the air like this, and it detects me, it will rotate towards me. But it, it, it again comes down pretty low to the ground. I think it should probably be higher up than that. I could do that in the animations of the rig of the creature I make. 
and just, you know, set the root higher up, but I feel like that's kind of against the point here. I shouldn't have to do that. Okay, I have fixed everything I needed to and wanted to. Let me show you all. So here he is, our little red cuboid flying around. Uh, he won't notice us straight away, but if we kind of enter this area where he's in, uh, he'll kind of notice us as we're moving about. And he'll come and attack us. Flock to us, you could say. And yeah, if we stand still and let him attack us, he will attack us. But if we kind of run away... I want to keep the camera facing him. Keep running away. At a point, we'll reach... Or we can just boost. There we go. But if we go back over here... Uh, he will notice us again when he gets here. There he is. Look, you see his shadow more than anything. So, it starts moving towards us. We can attack and we can kill it. And it just did damage to us, as you can see. But in reality, there's still a few things there I want to tweak. Things like the rotation, the way it moves, the speed it'll move. Let me actually spawn it again. There we go. And yeah, so if we get it to follow us again, there we go. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of tweak these settings a lot, probably when we have the character in an actual creature mode in game. But you can see right now it's quite fast. And if we're not boosting, so say we're in a sub zone, it takes quite a long time for us to run away from it for it to then go idle. So maybe we'll tweak the speed of it, do a ton of things with that. But overall, it works, it functions. This is a flying creature. Uh, well, it's a, it's a red cuboid that's currently rotated in a weird way. But I think this will work. I think this will be really cool. So, going forward, I want to create a creature for this. Uh, you know, actually design and create a, a creature that will fly around. And we can have them in flocks flying into different areas. And they'll come down and attack us and things like that. To be honest, we could also make them, like, neutral to the player. But it'd be very rare for us to then trigger that. So I think it'd be more interesting if they do decide to chase us and come after us and stuff. But yeah, there we go. I think that works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, right now, I feel like that it should already have seen me. So I do need to work on the actual sensing system. So when it knows we're there and stuff, which I will do in the future. But the actual base elements are in there now. So I can start tweaking and working on that when the actual model is in there don't really know what I want this thing to look like. I just know I want it to be a flying thing. Okay, a couple of tweaks here. You can see it flying around. Uh, it does rotate towards its different points now. I need to figure out how to smooth those different points out. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that and how that looks. And if I step under this thing, so if I go over here where it's going to fly, it's going to come over here. It's actually going to know that I'm here. And it's going to come and try to get me. But as you can see, if I run away from it now, it's a little slower. So it's going to go back to its idle state a little bit more easily than it did before. And then go back to rotating between its points. Again, if I run under here, it's going to notice that I'm here. And it's going to chase me. It still can sense me from further away. That's still a function, but I've now got it basically casting down as well. So that if you walk under one of these birds or these creatures, these winged creatures, it's going to... Yeah, turn around and be like, okay, I know someone's underneath me. Which is pretty cool. And there we go, it's going to reset. Again, a lot more tweaks, a lot more things I will fix in the future. But I think now that is a base level flying AI done. So for this part of the devlog, I want to work on buttons, doors, and keys. So we're specifically working on this section here. So right now, if I walk up here and I press X, you see the door will open up. And then the camera will switch back to me. What I want to do in that moment as well is lock you down from being able to move around. So the player will face towards the button prompt or the button thing. That means you could activate it on either side of here and the player will always stand facing uh, this actual button. And it'll also stop movement until the door has finished opening and the camera is back to you. And then you'll be able to move around again. Okay, so here we are, another little update. You can see now we have this cube that's bouncing up and down. So if I walk over here and I try to open this door, it says you don't have the required key. I need to fix that key press so it doesn't come up all the time like this. Look, but it says I don't have the required key. 
to open this door. So I need to go over here, need to collect that. And you see it's now added key, what is called key zero. And then I can press this and it will open. Now that's happened, I can't do anything else here. That's fully been expended and I can't do anything else with that. One other thing I've added is, you may notice if I click here and I'm looking the wrong way, when the camera switches, the character is now facing that object again, that pedestal, which means I can play an animation or something of him reaching out. Uh, I can add particles and stuff like that in place, which should work pretty great. Okay, and to demonstrate this a little bit more, please ignore the weird flickering on the floating cubes, by the way. It's not a thing that we permanent. It's just because of the material used. So you can see here, there's three setups. These are called door one in blue, door two in purple, and door three in yellow. So if I now pick up this key here, you'll see that it says I've been added key two. But if I go over here to the yellow door and I try to open it, it says I don't have the key required. But if I go over here to the purple one, I do have the key required. So I can open that door just fine. If I go over here to the blue one, I don't have the key. But if I pick up the blue key and I press it, door will open. This is a completely reusable and simple to use just door opening blueprint thing that I built what, in maybe half an hour or so? I'm really happy with it, actually. For just how simple it is. It works great. So there we go, we have keys, we have doors, and we have buttons to open those doors. Obviously, they are very, very basic, and they don't really do anything right now. And of course, over here, I couldn't open this door from this side, because this is like a one-sided door. You're not really supposed to be out here, unless you already have the key on the other side. So now you can see this in practice down there. You can see our hopper bouncing around and there's the red door with the red button. But if I come up here and I climb up here, this is actually where the key is gonna be in the final game too. We can come up here, we can collect this and we can come down here and we can go around. And we might wanna fight that hopper. Oh, he's just kinda hanging out over here at the moment, you see that? He was like, what's happening? I don't know what did that. Maybe one of the patrol points he got caught on some collision or something. I can fix that. But yeah, now I have that. I can come over here and I can press X. And I can open this door because I went and collected that key. And I can now go in here and out into the open world. One thing just very quickly I wanted to talk about is that I'm storing these keys at game mode level, not at player level. Which means that the game mode will remember that I'm collecting these keys. It now knows I've collected key three. If I go over here, it now knows I've collected key one. What that means in general is that if the player dies, it won't reset all the keys it's collected. At a game mode level, it will always remember that. And I can also code that into the save system later on down the line when we add a save system so that it will remember that the player has collected these, these different keys so that if the player dies or saves without using a key, they can come in game, reload the game, and it'll remember that the keys are still there. Little update on how this is going. When you collect this now, we've got a prompt that comes up. Again, this is all super early. Just wanted to add that in. But now if I come up here, it'll also say press X to open door, and it'll play the camera angle and do all of that. Of course, the prompt stays up. I will remove that uh, very soon, but it's there. Now if I go and spawn myself back in again, and we pick this up again, you see it says key collected again, but if I come over here and I press this, you see it's a different camera angle that's playing. So there are now currently three camera angles in the blueprint for the door opening, and it will randomly select which one every time you open a different door. So let me show you, the hopper's gonna come attack, let me show you what happens if you walk up to this without the key. You do not have the required key, I'm pressing X, doesn't work. And yeah, like I said before, this stays up on the screen for a while. Oh no, the hopper. The hopper. And there we go, there's the third angle. Works great. So yeah, now we can open this door. It's gonna select this one that's behind the character. And we can head out into the world. So I just want to admit here, I've had way too much fun implementing this door key on what I'm calling pedestal system. You'll see what I mean when we get down there. But just polishing this up has been so much fun. Here you can see the actual key model, right here. Again, I'm trying to make it all kind of connect into a little bit like that, the dungeon beacon idea I had at the start of this devlog. So you pick this up, 
you come down here and now we can walk up here and it says press X to open door. You can see the new pedestal is red and the door itself is also red. And if we hit this, it looks something like this. See the door open and now we can walk through and out we are into the main world. So that feels pretty great and it shows a visual representation of these sort of beams and particle systems and stuff that kind of will make people have that initial click in their heads to be like, oh... It's the same thing, and it'll lead them down that path for the dungeon shards as well. Let me just show it one more time. So if I come over here, you'll see character reaches his arm out, and you can see the key actually appear in the pedestal. It all turns green, shoots the beam out, and unlocks the door. Yeah, I'm super, super happy with that. For testing purposes, I've just been spawning the key down here, and you can see key collected, and if I run up to here, it changes over to this different prompt straight away. And then if I walk away, it's gone. Hello, Hopper. I knew you would attack. Go away. Nobody likes you. Okay, let's open the door. We get this camera angle. Opens up. And we can leave. I'm super, super happy with it. Hopefully you all like it too. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it'll work with uh, these ones out here. But I'm assuming it'll just do the same thing. Yeah, okay, the, the textures are messed up because I haven't fixed them, but it works. Um, even on these ones out here, and you can see all the different camera angles working. Sweet. And what you might find interesting as well is you can literally place this from anywhere. So I'm going to place it here, but I'm going to turn the opposite way. Still, I face to the where the key needs to be. The animation plays in the correct direction. And once I come out of the animation, I'm still within that rotation value and everything, and I can still leave. Yeah, super, super happy with that. This is going to be a super robust... I keep saying the word super... It is really robust and we can use it for so many different things now going forward and I'm excited to really keep evolving this and using it and implementing it. Hopefully you all are excited as me. I know it seems strange to be so excited over a key and some... Oh, look at the, the hopper got stuck over there. That collision on that rock is stopping him. Uh, I just hope you're all as excited as I am about this. I know it seems strange to be so excited about, you know, a, a key that you know, fires a beam at a door and opens it, but I just love it so much, and it just feels like it adds so much character to the world to see that and to feel that happening. It just, it just seems so cool to me, and yeah, super, super happy with it. Okay, for this section of the devlog, we're going to be talking about a few different things, including something that, well, it's, it's going to be a little contentious because it's to do with the idea of change, but hang on for that ride for a little bit. I'll talk about it in a second. First up, I just want to talk about the boosting system again. I know I talked about it last week, but there's been a few improvements now. It feels a little bit better while we're boosting around now. And of course, we can boost out of this into a glide, and it feels great. And go straight back into a boost if we really wanted to, once we've landed. Overall, feels pretty great. I like the FOV increasing as you increase speed. I think that feels really nice, the particles and everything. All feels really great. You can see the particles go a little crazy sometimes, but it works for now. Looks really great. Really happy with that. So, the thing in question I wanted to talk about and talk about change is the dungeon and the way it looks. Because now we have the doors that are like dividing up the um, dividing up the, the zones and everything with the doors and all of that. This feels a little bit like, oh, we're just going into another zone. Because it looks so similar, right? I don't feel like this feels grand enough, big enough, or really unique enough for what it is. So, I think I'm going to get rid of it. Which is a strange thing to say, but I've always really lived with the mentality that the first time you do anything, it's never going to be great. Apply it to whatever you want. I don't think it's going to be great. So, you've already seen me redo things, change things, and I've actually done a lot of things where like, I've designed creatures and characters and deleted them and started again. I've done that so many times on this game already and just not shown you, but then you've also seen me mess up and fix things. So, while I don't think this is a mess up or something that needs to be fixed, I think we just get rid of it, but we use some of the ideas here, especially these pillars. But what if they were moving? Or what if you made them move? And I think that's 
a better sort of way to talk about it is how about we reawaken this structure and we ble breathe life into it and it's this really uniquely shaped thing that you see on the horizon the whole game rather than just being you know some blocks we can't really see it from here um but you know, if we went back to the start of the level over here, it's just, it really, in the distance, just looks like three cubes stacked on top of each other. And while I do want this to be geometric, I think the more diamond shape is more interesting for the dungeon aesthetic. And I also think triangles and that sort of stuff looks cooler. And I think, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we had a, this huge looming structure on the distance, out in the distance on the horizon, and it just had a constant beam shooting up from it. But the rest of it was dull. But as you went around the planet and you activated the different beacons that we talked about at the start of this devlog, it started to come to life. Things started to move. Colors started to be re-added to it. That, to me, sounds way more interesting to see you interacting with the world and your choices and the things you do having an impact. So, with that in mind, buckle up. It gets weird. And here we are. That is the new look for the dungeon. It's pretty a, a radical departure from what it was before, but I very much wanted it to feel like this factory almost, this huge alien structure that goes on and on and on and is just this massive looming thing. There's still a lot of work I want to do to it, but let me show you it closer up and you'll get a better idea for what I'm going for, I think. Okay, here we go, boosting over to it now. And you can see when you're at this sort of ground level, it has a very distinct feel to it it's monolithic uh, ignore all these scenery objects by the way they're from the previous dungeon you know entrance design they won't be there but if i go back over here and i turn the camera around you can see it's got a very cool look about it i'm not sure why these things are popping in and out of existence on the side by the way i need to fix that but i'll show you what those are in a second but yeah, you can kind of get a really nice feel for this now, and you imagine that once you've activated all the dungeon beacon things that we talked about at the start of the episode, and this door opens, it's going to look so cool seeing this huge sort of doorway that will be here opening up. The idea of activating multiple things and bringing something to life. Let me show you. Imagine right now I've just pressed one of those dungeon beacon things. It's sent a beam up into the sky. It's beamed down here, and we're watching a cutscene, and then this happens. One of the towers here comes alive, and then this keeps happening every time you activate a beacon until, right now I'm saying 10, I know I've been saying 15 shards for a really long time, I'm saying 10 to open the door right now on this first planet, and let me show you what it would look like with all five currently here activated. And here we go. This is all five on this side, all activated. Again, I'll probably tweak the scale of these and build something more unique for them to be stood on but how cool would it be if you know you arrive here and you see that there's so much of the rubble has now come alive and been created into these moving objects and then there's another five over here and then you see that cutscene and they're all there finished and that basically tells you okay the door's open we can go in now i think that's such a cool idea to be building up this world and bring life back to it this long dominant piece of technology i think that's uh really really cool hopefully you all like that i know that was a bit of a weird way for me to talk about this but i think in the long run this approach is going to be way 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 cooler and we're going to be able to do way more with it than we have would have been able to do with the last dungeon entrance to be honest it was quite small uh, all things considered I know we built it back in, I think it was Devlog 3, but, you know, this one is, uh, you know, a little bit more unique, I think. And if I pop out of here, let me just do that. There we go. So, a really good thing to talk about this with, I actually think these two textures are flipped. Yeah, let me flip these two textures back over. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. Much better. So... Yeah, right now, this is still very much a work in progress, but you can imagine when you first start the level, it's this sort of dull, monolithic structure that you're seeing from those cliffs over there. And then, as you activate more of these, the green light starts to shine through. And then, once you've activated all ten, a big blast of energy happens. All of the lights come on. 
and the door opens and you have all these moving pedestals, pillars, whatever you want to call them, all over the place. I think that's going to look really cool. Right now, this is kind of my idea of where the, the beams from the different beacons are going to come to. So they would be collected into this and then be kind of siphoned through this. And I did this weird design on here because I was like, oh, we'll have one beam per focusing square or whatever. It, it, it was, this is why it's super high res and it's not it's not a finished thing because I just quickly mocked it up in Photoshop and I was like, I actually don't think I like that. I don't think we need a bespoke 10 or 20 thing. I think it can just, again, be another sort of like laser thing that shoots down and it just shoots to the different pedestals every time it collects one of these beams. And then we can have some sort of progress update on either the beacons themselves or on the player or on the player's hood or in the menus or something like that to show the progress separately. But I like having this in-world progress bar being these sort of this this load of rubble that's slowly being rebuilt. I think that's a really cool idea. Hopefully you will like it as well. I know the dungeon is a radical departure, and I promise you it'll look so much better when there's coral all around it and the jungle is kind of like overtaking it and there's rocks and mountains and everything kind of built around it, because right now it just kind of feel like it stands out. And it is very weird looking. And I think I'll be changing some of the the lines and the shapes and stuff. This isn't final by any stretch, so please don't take it as such. But a lot of this is very much what I want it to be. And it looks quite alien. It looks very weird, which is really what I want. And this shape down here was my main focus of an idea. This sort of like pyramid, sort of triangular shape with then the diamond doorway in the middle. And when you look at it and you look at the designs on it and the patterns on it and everything and you look close up you let oh yeah that that looks just like the if i fly over there super fast the dungeon doorways that you'll be seeing all over the planet like these but you know in a much much bigger way much much bigger okay and this is the final update for the devlog here's how the dungeon is looking now way happy with it but i was pretty happy with it before too and we can go up here and you can see here is the dungeon Here's how it's looking. I'm loving how the doorway looks now. I've got an animation for that. I haven't imported it yet where it like opens up and everything for when you get the first 10 beacons activated. But let me show you how these are looking now. So if I head over here, it'll trigger one of these pillars. And you can see as it crashes down, it comes to life and it's sending that signal for the first one. Let me activate all the others because if I quickly boost through, it did all of them except for one. <laughs> Uh, let me activate that last one. Must have just missed it. And these have all got slightly different animations as well now. So if you can see if I go over around to the other side, you'll see there's quite a lot of different things and it doesn't look like it's just all the same repeating pattern now. It looks like there's a bunch of different blocks. And if I line myself up just right, I should be able to get... Oh, I got all except for the first one. <laughs> activate. These don't have collision yet either. Uh, let me go back and grab that last one. There we go. And this is what it would look like with all 10 of those pillars on the sides. All moving, all animating. I think it looks really cool. The only thing I don't like is this thing right in front of us, which is meant to lift up and give you that thing at the end that I talked about before when you have all 20 on the planet. So I do want to revisit this and redesign this structure. Not happy with it at all. But... That can be a thing for another time. But yeah, I love how when you're walking around you can just see these things moving around. Very cool. And you can see we can come up to the door here. And this is where we would enter the first dungeon. Yeah, I, I like this a lot. I love how this has turned out. Again, like I said, just want to work on this a little bit. Tweak it, make it a little bit better. Do something more interesting with it. But overall, yeah, super, super happy with that. And here's how it currently looks from a distance. Let's see, it looks pretty interesting, I think. I think it's quite striking. We can add some more things to it. But I think overall, that's a pretty strong visual thing to draw your eye to and make you want to go visit it and have some sort of, you know, interesting doing something there. But that is it for devlog number 9. It's crazy to think that we are at number 10 next week already. So thank you all so much for your support. 
I am extremely, extremely happy with how the devlogs have been going, so thank you so much for that. You can, of course, support me on the channel by hitting join or sending a super thanks. Huge thanks to Dan Sanger and David Nurkala, who are our two channel members at the moment. All channel members will get shouted out in devlogs just like these. And make sure as well, if you're a channel member, to stay tuned to the channel for exclusive community posts and videos in the coming weeks. And I also just wanted to announce that we have a Discord server. We do. It's very early days right now. But you can go on there. I know a lot of people don't use Twitter and stuff, so you can get notified for devlogs, updates, you can see screenshots. A lot of things I've been posting on there, but if you have any other ideas you want for the Discord, please let me know. Happy to post those. And yeah, hopefully you all have enjoyed this devlog. Here I go activating these pillars. Maybe I can get two in different sequences. Oh, there we go. We got all of them. I love it. It looks so cool. Uh, yeah, so let me know if there's any other ideas, thoughts for the Discord server. And you can, of course, still follow me over on Twitter if you want more frequent updates where I post random things all throughout the week as I'm working on things. Let me know what you all think of the dungeon and how it's uh, evolved and how now that you go around the planet and you activate these beacons and it brings this dungeon to life. And in the process of doing that, you see that visual representation happening all the time. I think it's a really cool little motif we can have throughout the game. We're kind of reactivating slumbering relics. Next week will be a special one for the 10th devlog. And yeah, I'm excited to share that one with you all. Maybe we'll uh, implement something to do with that flying AI that I built earlier. Keep adapting that and evolving that to another stage. And maybe we'll get a creature in game as well. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for your support. And I will see you all next week. Goodbye.